Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening. I first want to give you an update. Two weeks ago I planted four types of squash in these nice rows that I have here. And you can see everything has greened up nicely. And we'll get a closer look in a little bit. The clover has come out from underneath the winter rye that we cut down and the annual rye grass. That's growing so we're going to have a nice three mounds of solid lush green foliage of perennial roots that are going to be growing soil for me. Now, in the meantime, we have planted in on the left hand row is the uh, butternut squash. In the middle we have our zucchini and yellow squash and on the right hand side we have our spaghetti squash. So let's take a look. So this is row one where you can see that we have that lush green foliage coming back up again. We have three different types of clover in here and that's taking over very nicely because now it's getting plenty of sunlight because we removed the five foot tall winter rye and some of the annual rye grass that's been in there. So hidden in our row one here, this is our spaghetti squash here. You can see one, two, three, and four. Now that's doing very nicely. And now I just integrated it with the living roots of all the other plants here, and it's doing fine. It's not being overcrowded or nothing, and it's gonna grow nice and healthy for me and produce some nice spaghetti squash. And in some places, the clover is starting to bloom very nicely. Again, also, it's making nice flower heads, so it's gonna be attracting all those beneficial insects. So we're on the subject here of all this green foliage. That is habitat for the good bugs. Now, I know a lot of people get hit with vine borers and also squash bugs, but when you have this habitat around your squash plants, what I'm trying to do this year, because I'm planting so much in an area, if anybody's gonna get hit with bugs, I should, because I have so much uh, squash in a condensed area that I'm inviting it in, because the smell of that plant is going to radiate and bring all those bad bugs in. But I have to have the habitat here ready, not sitting far away, right around the plant. You have to have that habitat where the good bugs will be sitting and waiting when those bad bugs come in there so they can attack. They're not gonna come in five feet away because they're eating on something else. They have to be here already next to the plant waiting for the other bad bugs to show up and control them. They're defending that area, so that area has to be controlled right now with all this habitat for them. So I'm going to go right down a line here. This is about another, say, three or four feet away. Here's another grouping of spaghetti squash. So here we have another nice grouping. You can see here one, two, and three of spaghetti squash doing very nicely. And every so often we have a seed implanted. Now you can see it's starting to make flowers on there. Um, they're going to be pink in color eventually and hopefully in the next, say, couple weeks. So again, whatever you can find in your area, strawberry plants are great. Anything that's a perennial root that will keep the root in the ground and survive over winter is going to help you grow soil. Now we've moved on to row number two, so let's take a look at the yellow squash and zucchini in here. Now here I have two yellow squash plants. Now they're tucked away in all this nice clover habitat. Now they're gonna grow very tall as you know, as squash plants do. But all this, and where the stems are down below, is being maintained by a certain height of good plants and good bugs. Now, those bad bugs are gonna to have to struggle to get down there on the stem like the vine borers. But again, all the other good bugs are waiting for it because we have this tight, closed habitat of all the good bugs in there looking and waiting for those bad bugs to show up. Now we moved on to a different spot. Now again, the same thing. We have all this nice clover sitting here, so a ladybug can be sitting here waiting if it smells an intrusion and can defend the area. It doesn't have to sit on the ground. It's not going to fly in and, and just be there. Now I moved on to my green zucchini. Now we have a little bit less clover here, but I think we'll do okay. So we have plenty of habitat still around it. So here we are, row number three. And this is the uh, butternut squash area. So let's see if we can find them. Here we have our first group of butternut squash. Now, all these are planted by seeds. In row one, two, and three, we planted seeds uh, about two weeks ago. And again, nicely hidden in the canopy. Here's another beautiful grouping, and that's doing very well. 
And just a reminder, I never use any organic or inorganic fertilizer and I never spray. I'm trying to create a living habitat for the plants to do just as well. And again, this is the same principle that uh, you've seen that's gone in your own garden. Did you come out and you get some volunteer squash or watermelon left over from last year and it does extremely well. Why? It's doing the same thing that you see here. It's just being planted in the ground. The ground is not disturbed. The soil is not disturbed and also too it has that recycling of nutrients in the ground already from last year that can get that seed going and being healthy right from the start. I almost forgot, I want to add this into the a couple of viewers that have been asking how my tomato plants are doing. This row is 300 feet long. Now these got knocked down a little bit, but they came back uh, pretty well. They're growing very nicely back on the trellis again. I don't wish to grow tall plants. I know a lot of people that are confined in spaces like to go more vertical uh, than I do. Now I just happen to have the space, so I like to, like to go more <laughs> horizontal if I can. Uh, it's a lot easier picking. But this row is 300 feet long and it has about 100 plants in it. And you can see that's doing extremely well. Now here we have a good volunteer plant, our sunflower. Now these are seeds that have been left over from last winter. I did not plant these in here. It survived and is doing extremely well bringing in beneficial insects. I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope I shared something with you that you found interesting. Please, if you have any comments or any questions, list them below and I'll get right back to you. Enjoy your day and have a happy fourth.